Previously, we talked about after the death of Jiang Jiam's parents, Jiang Jiam followed her mother's wishes and came to the palace as a junior court lady. She was assigned to Lady Han, and her wish was to become the head of the royal kitchen. The ladies of the Choi family had held the head of royal kitchen positions for five generations. They would do anything to keep it that way, but as the head of royal kitchen Mrs. Choi violated the rules, she had to resign. Lady Choi, who was expected to become the successor, was not qualified yet. Thus, the Choi family forces pushed a puppet Lady Jun to become the temporary head kitchen lady. However, the Choi family didn't know that Lady Jun was not afraid of the Choi family forces and actively reformed the royal kitchen. What difficulties will Jiang Jiam encounter in the palace afterward? As Jiang Jiam grows up, she still retains her wild nature disobedient and energetic. She is often punished for her mistakes by doing cleaning work, but fortunately, she has her good friend Yunxing to record notes for her lessons. Jiang Jiam and Yunxing are still relatively low in rank in the palace. They are not allowed to make imperial meals for the royal family yet. Meanwhile, Jiam Young continues to get special treatment because of the Choi family. She has already started to make meals for the royal family with Lady Choi. Recently, the princess has been ill and has refused to eat for six days. Even though Lady Choi has prepared the meal using the Choi family's recipe, which has been passed down from generation to generation, the princess still refuses to eat. The emperor is deeply worried. Soon, the news comes that the princess has fainted from hunger, making Lady Choi very nervous. Lady Choi sends Jiam Young to the sauce house to get more aged miso to whet the princess's appetite. Jiam Young obeys the order and runs to the sauce house, where she finds Jiang Jiam, who is in charge of guarding the sauce house. Jiang Jiam is experimenting with various sauces in the sauce storehouse. Jiam Young tastes the fermented soybean paste Jiang Jiam makes and finds it doesn't stink. She asks Jiang Jiam how she did it. Jiang Jiam says that she uses charcoal to remove the bad smell from the sauce. Inspired by Jiang Jiam, Jiam Young also tries to use charcoal to remove the bad smell from the rice and serves the princess a bowl of white porridge. The princess is finally willing to eat. Lady Jung then understands that the barn had been soaked in water during the last plum rain. The smell of the rice is different from the previous two years. They can't smell the odor because they are old while the princess can sense it because she's young. The royal kitchen department gets rewarded, and all the supervisors praise Jiam Young. But she confesses that it's because she saw Jiang Jiam put charcoal in the soy sauce that made it especially mellow that she came to understand this magic formula. Later, Ming Dynasty ambassadors visit and brings a gold pheasant, a symbol of good luck, to celebrate the emperor's birthday. Since Jiam Young succeeded in getting the princess to eat, she is given the opportunity to cook the gold pheasant and is also responsible for keeping it. But soon after, the golden pheasant is nowhere to be found. An anxious Jingying wants to sneak out of the palace and ask her uncle Choi Pansel to help her buy a golden pheasant, but the palace maid will be severely punished for leaving the palace. After weighing the pros and cons, Jiam Young goes to the palace entrance and tries to sneak out, but finds that guards are guarding it, so she can't get through. Suddenly, Jiang Jiam appears, worried about Jiam Young. Jiang Jiam offers to accompany her to find the golden chicken. Jiang Jiam takes Jiam Young and sneaks out of the palace through an iron gate she found earlier. When they arrive at the Choi Mansion, her uncle Choi Pansel is not there. Jiang Jiam tells Jiam Young to stay at the Choi Mansion, and she plans to go to her adoptive father for help. Jiam Young tells her to return as soon as possible, so they can return to the palace in time. <laughs> Jiang Jiam's adoptive father is Daku, the liquor store owner. Jiang Jiam lived with him for a while as a child and already saw him as her adoptive father. Daku not only runs the liquor store, but also is a palace chef and knows the channels for buying various ingredients. In the late Joseon dynasty, the royal kitchen was responsible for cooking the usual meals. But when a banquet was held, a separate temporary kitchen was set up for some male chefs to be in charge of cooking and Duck Gu was one of the chefs in charge of the banquet. Duck Gu tells Jiang Jiam that she can only buy the golden pheasant from the dock merchant. On the other hand, Lady Choi finds out that the two have left the palace. Lady Choi immediately goes to Choi's house and wants to take them back to the palace. The Choi family underlings have managed to buy the golden pheasant, much to the relief of both Jiam Young and Lady Choi. Jiam Young wants to wait for Jiang Jiam to return, but Lady Choi forcibly pulls her back to the palace. Jiang Jim succeeds in buying a golden pheasant from the dock merchant. On her way back, she meets a man, Min Jong Ho, 
who was shot by a dart. Unable to ignore the injured man, Zhang Zhem immediately tears off the hem of her skirt and treats his wound. She also searches for herbs nearby to stop his bleeding, but as a result, she's late getting back to the palace and gets caught. When Min Zhongho wakes up, he doesn't know that it's Zhang Zhem that saved him. He only finds a knife that Zhang Jiam accidentally left behind. Zhang Jiam has to be expelled from the palace for violating the rules. Lady Han and Lady Jing spare no effort to intercede for Zhang Jiam. Lady Han even promises not to receive the state's salary for three years. Finally, Zhang Jiam's chance to serve in the palace is preserved. But Zhang Jiam could no longer stay at Royal Kitchen and is demoted to the herb garden in the middle of nowhere. That's usually the place where all the demoted people go. In the past, as long as people were demoted to the herb garden, none of them could come back to the royal kitchen. In fact, they were already abandoned by the palace. The herb garden is a vegetable garden where herbs and vegetables are grown. Zhang Jiam comes here to find that Wunbek, who's in charge of the garden, drinks all day. Nobody does any work here, just waiting for time to pass. When Zhang Jiam returns to the imperial kitchen to pick up something, she finds that her friends have all been practicing to refine their cooking skills. Infected by their positive spirit, she decides to work hard too. Zhang Jiam begins to plant and cultivate plants and learns about herbs, whereas everyone else gets drunk on a daily basis. She finds out that Bekban, a herb that is good for health, has never been successfully grown. Therefore, she decides to make it her goal to grow Bekban. After working hard day in and day out, Bekban finally sprouts. Zhang Jiam's persistent spirit has infected everyone in the herb garden. Wunbek also admires this defiant girl in his heart. One night, all the Bekban seedlings have been destroyed, so Zhang Jiam has to replant the seeds. The next night, she and Wunbek lurk around the ground and catch the person trying to destroy the Bekban seedlings. Wunbek immediately sends him to a magistrate and asks for a sentence. Unfortunately, the magistrate had been bribed by the Choi family. It turns out that Choi Pansel of the Choi family imports Bekban from China and then sells it at a high price as the middleman. And the Bekban that Zhang Jiam plants have threatened the way of profit for corrupt officials such as Choi Pansel. Wun Bek sees that the magistrate and the corrupt officials are protecting each other. He deliberately pretends to be drunk and takes the Bekban seedlings to a seedling shop to sell them. In this way, all the people of Josian know about the success of Bekban cultivation. Due to this incident, the palace finds out that Zhang Jiam has succeeded in Bekban cultivation, and Zhang Jiam can return to the royal kitchen as a reward. Before leaving, Zhang Jiam records her research results in a book for her colleagues to refer to for planting. <laughs> Wunbek asks Zhang Jiam to forward a letter to a friend at the royal library when she returns to the palace. Zhang Jiam is very pleased to find this place full of books. A man comes in and tells her that palace women can't go into the royal library. The man is Min Zhongho, but Zhang Jiam doesn't recognize him as the man she saved. And Min Zhongho doesn't know it was Zhang Jiam who saved her. He only has the knife that Zhang Jiam left behind. He's a general in the royal guards. Zhang Jiam gives him the letter Wunbek writes. He reads the letter, which says that the person who brought the letter should be allowed to read any book she wants because she will help people with her talents. The letter was written to someone who no longer works at the library. So Min Zhongho tells Zhang Jiam to let him know when she wants to read a book and he'll get it for her. Back in the kitchen, it's busy as usual as the girls have to get ready for the cooking competition. Those who pass will be promoted to a rank higher. Anyone who fails the test will have to leave the palace. The topic of the exam is to make dumplings. After distributing the ingredients, everyone begins to work intensely on the preparation. At night, Zhang Jiam wants to practice, but she suddenly notices that her flour is missing. Without flour, she is unable to make the dumpling skin. Zhang Jiam frantically searches for flour and finally finds the palace maid who stole her flour in a kitchen. She is making steamed bun soup. Zhang Jiam is furious and the two of them fight fiercely for the flour and soon attract the guards as well. The little girl tells the crowd that her elderly mother is going to retire tomorrow and leave the palace. And her mother's favorite food is steamed bun soup. She wants to make a bowl of soup for her mother on her farewell occasion. Hearing this, the kind-hearted Zhang Jiam doesn't continue to fight over the flour, but helps the little girl make the soup. But what would she do without flour for the next day's competition? Zhang Jiam thinks hard and suddenly she comes up with a solution. The next day, everyone is making dumplings with flour, while Zhang Jiam only has a pile of cabbage leaves in her hand. 
What is she planning to do? Soon, the competition time is over and the examiners start to test their food one by one. They come to Jang Jum because she lost the flower. Her design is very special, replacing the dumpling skins with cabbage leaves. Then one of the examiners picks it up and tastes it. Well, it's delicious. However, Lady Choi thinks that Jang Jiem did not use flour according to the competition rules and her result is invalid. For this reason, the examiners discuss it for a while. Finally, Lady Jung announces the result of the competition. Jiem Young wins first place as usual. Ten court ladies have to be expelled from the palace. The girls whose names are read out are all heartbroken. The last person who didn't pass is Jang Jiem. Her score is zero and is also to be expelled from the palace. But at that moment, the Queen Mother suddenly comes to visit them. The Queen Mother is an easygoing and courteous woman. She is immediately attracted by a dish in front of her and picks up a piece to try. The Queen Mother asks the examiner what ranking Jang Jiem got in the exam. Lady Jung replies that Jang Jiem has failed because of violating the competition rules. The Queen Mother asks Jang Jiem why she uses these ingredients. Jang Jiem replies she heard that the food culture in the palace leads the people's food culture. Right now the cabbage is in the trial sowing stage, but soon it will become a vegetable growing everywhere in Joseon. But flour is very expensive. This dumpling made with cabbage leaves is actually more like a home-cooked dish for Joseon people. Jang Jiem's answer wins the Queen Mother's heart. She praises Jang Jiem and lets Jang Jiem pass the test so she can stay in the palace. The palace girls who pass the test, like Jang Jiem, can now make imperial meals for the royal family. To congratulate Jang Jiem, Lady Han gives her Lady Park's kitchen knife, which she has treasured for a long time. Lady Han tells Jang Jiem that the knife was her best friend's kitchen knife that she used to use. However, Lady Han and Jang Jiem still do not know each other's relationship with Lady Park. Jang Jiem opens the letter that her mother wrote to her before she died. In the letter, her mother tells Jang Jiem to fight to become the head kitchen lady. The head kitchen lady has a record book. Her mother asks Jang Jiem to investigate the truth of her murder and record it in the record book. In addition, her mother tells Jang Jiem that she has a recipe book hidden in the main middle kitchen, which Jang Jiem can use as a reference for cooking. Now Jang Jiem gets to enter the main middle kitchen where her mother's recipe book is hidden. Therefore at night she comes here to look for it. Jiem Young suddenly appears and asks Jang Jiem what she's doing here. Jang Jiem casually finds an excuse and leaves. After Jang Jiem leaves, Jiem Young confirms that no one is there. She immediately goes to the main middle kitchen and hides a bad luck charm there. It is an unusual bad luck charm that's against the queen who is pregnant. The spell will change her fetus from a boy to a girl. It turns out that Lady Choi told Jiem Young to put the bad luck charm in the main middle kitchen. If the queen gives birth to a prince, the Choi family's power will be threatened. Jiem Young initially refused to do so. Lady Choi angrily warned her that it would be impossible to succeed in the court with simple efforts. The Choi family understood the importance of clinging to those in power to become richer than the nobility. Jiem Young had to compromise and accept the mission for the family's glory. Yenqing, Jiang Jiem's best friend, happens to pass by. She accidentally sees through the doorway that Jiem Young is hiding an object on the beam. When Jiem Young comes out, Yensheng hurriedly hides. Ji Myung looks around and sees no one's there, so she leaves. Yunxing is also ready to leave but she suddenly sees Jiang Jiem goes into the main middle kitchen again. It turns out Jiang Jiem has also been waiting for Ji Myung to leave. She continues to search for the recipe book her mother has left her, but she can't find it. The next morning, a curious Yunxing asks Jiang Jiem why Ji Myung was hiding something last night while you were looking for something. Jiang Jiem is very confused. So Yunxing drags Jiang Jiem to the main middle kitchen. Then, Yunxing uses a hook to hook something on the beam. The bad luck charm is soon exposed and something else also falls out, a booklet. Jiang Jiem picks it up and sees that it's her mother's recipe book. Jiang Jiem leaves immediately because her mother has told her that under no circumstances should she reveal her recipe book. Yunxing also leaves without noticing that Jiem Young's bad luck charm is exposed. At night, the court ladies find the spell. Everyone knows that Jiang Jiem was on duty last night. So Jiang Jiem is locked up as a suspect. Lady Jung learns what the charm means and is shocked to find out that the curse is against the queen. She is determined to find out who did it. Lady Han doesn't believe that Jiang Jiem did it and wants Jiang Jiem to tell the truth. But Jiang Jiem keeps silent as she can't tell she was there for her mother's recipe book. 
After a few days, Zhang Jiam is starving to death. She thinks of what Yunxing said and already knows that the charm belongs to Jiam Yum. Yunxing is at the door and pleads Zhang Jiam to tell the truth, saying, You were looking for something and Jiam Yum was hiding something. Quickly tell everyone what you are looking for. But Zhang Jiam can't say why she was there because her mother told her never to tell anyone, and last time she told a secret her father got killed as a result. <laughs> the next morning, things take a turn. Jiam Young is also locked up in the warehouse. It turns out Yunxing told Lady Jung that she had seen Jiam Young in the kitchen that night, hiding something. In the end, Lady Jung decides to lock Jiam Young up in the warehouse until one of them confesses. A day passes, Jiam Young does not confess and Jiang Jiam remains silent, so Lady Jung decides to hand them over to the punishment department. Jiam Young's uncle Choi Pansu plots to save Jiam Young and Choi family. Lady Han approaches Lady Jung and tells her these years I watched Jiang Jiam grow up. I know that Jiang Jiam is not that kind of child. Years ago, I saw a friend get killed for no reason, and today I don't want a repeat of that tragedy. Jiang Jiam is innocent. You should know that because she's a kind-hearted girl. If you send them to the punishment department, then the culprit will surely forge evidence to prove that Jiang Jiam did it. That would be to let Jiang Jiam die. Mama Nian, Jiam. Lady Han's tears melt Lady Jung's heart. Lady Jung also believes that Jiang Jiam is innocent. She doesn't want to get an innocent person killed because of discipline. Thus, she promises not to pursue the matter. The next day, Jiang Jiam and Jiam Young are all released, and the incident is treated as if it had never happened. Lady Han carries the weak Jiang Jiam out of the warehouse. Some time later, Duku is suddenly arrested by the palace guards. Previously, I mentioned Duku is also a palace chef other than a wine store owner. He is arrested because the prince has been in a coma after drinking the duck soup Duku makes. The king becomes extremely worried and Duku is doomed to die. Jiang Jiam tells him not to worry, that she will find a way to get him out. Back at the royal kitchen, Jiang Jiam checks the ingredients Duku used to make the duck soup and concludes that the prince's coma has nothing to do with it. So what's wrong? Jiang Jiam learns from a medicine lady that the prince has been weak and that the royal doctor has given him nutmeg to eat until he falls into a coma. Jiang Jiam seems to understand something. She returns to the kitchen and is told by Lady Han that nutmeg is imported from China. It's very little used in Joseon, but the Chinese use it for medicine and spices. Then Jiang Jiam goes to the royal library and borrows a medicine book from Min Zhong Ho. Jiang Jiam begins to study the book tirelessly. Soon, she learns that too much nutmeg can cause paralysis. Suddenly, she is enlightened. <laughs> the next day, everyone comes to the warehouse and sees Jiang Jiam paralyzed. She tells everyone that the prince is unconscious because of the nutmeg he ate and the ginseng in the duck soup. Ginseng has the function of enhancing the medicinal effect. Although the prince only ate a little nutmeg, the effect of nutmeg would be greatly doubled under the influence of ginseng. And it is written in the medical book that too much nutmeg will make people stiff, so the prince will fall into a long coma. Hearing it, the official doubts. But this is all your conjecture. Jiang Jiam smiles and says she has already experimented with her own body. Soon after, the royal kitchen brings the answer to the emperor. After clarifying the cause of the disease, the imperial doctor simply does some acupuncture, and the prince wakes up. The emperor is so pleased that he then gives the person who finds out the cause a reward of 10 pounds of beef, and he releases Duku from prison. Meanwhile, Lady Jung is getting old and weak and wants to step down as head kitchen lady. One day when she's not feeling well, she asks Jiang Jiam to help her prepare a meal for the head court lady's birthday. The head court lady is one rank higher than the head of the royal kitchen, and is a position in the court responsible for all the court ladies. Therefore. Jiang Jiam must be careful in making meals for her. Lady Jung asks Jiang Jiam to take charge of the hot pot for the birthday banquet. The head court lady is furious when the hot pot is served and accuses Lady Jung of being displeased with her, which is why the food for the banquet tastes so bad. When Jiang Jiam learns that the head court lady is furious, she tastes the hot pot herself and asks Jiam Young how it tastes, only to find out that she has lost her sense of taste. She learns that this is the aftermath of the last time she tried ginseng and nutmeg herself. To recover early, she insists on going to the medicine lady for acupuncture, and she borrows various medical books from Min Zhang Ho. But there is no improvement after a long time. Lady Zheng's condition is getting worse. Lady Choi is eyeing the position of head kitchen lady. 
In the court, the head court lady decides who will be the next head kitchen lady, so Lady Choi bribes the head court lady to let her take over as the next head kitchen lady. Lady Jung has long been aware of the crisis and does not want to continue the bad habits of the Choi family. Therefore, she reports to the emperor that she wants to have a cooking competition between Lady Choi and Lady Han. The winner will be the next head kitchen lady. The competition will make them work harder and improve their cooking skills. It is also a fairer approach. The future selection of the next head kitchen lady could also continue this kind of cooking competition. The emperor appreciates Lady Jung's suggestion and agrees to do so. Soon after, a meeting is held at the imperial kitchen. The competition between Lady Choi and Lady Han is officially held the following week. Now, they each need to choose a cooking assistant, and Lady Choi of course chooses Jimyeom. Lady Han wants Jiang Jiem to help her win, but Jiang Jiem confesses that she has lost her sense of taste and can't help Lady Han. <laughs> Upon hearing this, Lady Han scolds Jiang Jiem for giving up so easily, which is unlike the always positive Jiang Jiem. The next day Lady Han takes Jiang Jiem out of the palace. They seek for medical help everywhere, but the doctor's answers are the same. This disease is not curable. It's an aftermath caused by toxins. It could be cured tomorrow, or it could be 10 years, or it could be a lifetime. The doctor's words are like a death sentence for Jiang Jiem, who is full of dreams. She has not yet completed her mother's expectations of her to become a head kitchen lady. Jiang Jiem is devastated. So will Jiang Jiem, who has lost her sense of taste, be thrown out of the palace? Will the next head kitchen lady be the sinister Lady Choi or the kind Lady Han? Since this drama is so long, I have to break it up into several parts. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.